Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to welcome you to the Math Tips and Tricks and Mental Calculations class. This is a 15 week class and I'll show you how it works. And this was actually based on a book that I read years ago called Math, Rapid Math Tricks Tips, uh, like number power or in 30 days or something like that. And it was actually a lot of the same things I had already been doing. But I used to teach this class in person, but now it's free to you. Look in, uh, below for the instructions on how to, where to get the uh, worksheets. You want to do a worksheet and check your answers and do that every week. One per day for four days. That's what you're looking at. 15 weeks of worksheets, um, four, day, four days per week. Just 10 problems per day. Take like five minutes. And five minutes a day for four days a week for 15 weeks. You'll be really surprised at the results you can get from this. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. Um, how to succeed in this class, really basically, you just need some loose leaf paper, four by six note cards or three by fives, pencils and a calculator to check your answers. Write the steps down in examples. When I show you these and you, oh, I forgot them, write the steps down, put them in your notes and refer back to them as much as you need to to help you, you know, make sure you know them. And it's okay to do it correctly, but slowly at first, but then you'll get faster and faster at this. Set up your notes like this. If you have a little notebook, like this is week seven here, write it like that so you can kind of flip back. And I would, what I would do is also transfer all my notes into a card, like a four by six or a three by five card, or just write it on there at the very beginning. So, all right, uh, do all the problems on the assignment sheets. I have laid these out to keep you going and testing old kinds of stuff like Saxon math does. So use your notes if you want to, but just try to use them less and less as the year goes on. Okay, first trick of the year. So get your pencil and paper out and write this down if you need to make a note out of it. How to multiply and divide with zeros. Here's the trick. Number one, add the number of zeros when you multiply. And you can pause this anytime, of course. Number two, subtract the number of zeros when you divide. All right, I'll show you an example. You're multiplying with this one right here, 20 times 60. And we assume you know all your times tables. Two times six is 12. There's one plus one, that's two zeros. Since we're multiplying, the answer is 1,200. This one, we have eight times nine, that's 72. Then you do the zeros. Two zeros plus one zero is three zeros, so the answer is 72,000. This one is a division problem, so you'll be subtracting the zeros. So two zeros minus one zero is one zero. And you look at this this way. 56 divided by eight is seven, there's your answer. Do another division, we're subtracting again. Three zeros minus three zeros is Oh, excuse me, that's four zeros. Four zeros minus three zeros is one zero. 45 divided by nine is five. So there we go, and that's your answer. All right, let's do a multiplication one. Pause it for a second and try it yourself. Okay, and we'll unpause it there, obviously here. Six times seven is 42. This is a multiplication problem, so we're gonna add the two plus the three zeros. That's one, two, three, four, five. That is one, two, and four million. $200,000, which is my annual salary. Wait, and 37 cents. No, that's not right, anyway, okay. Let's do the last one. We divide, and we look at this and go, we have five zeros, we're gonna subtract four zeros, which gives us one zero. Then we go 48 divided by 12 is four, so the answer is 40, there we go, okay. Go ahead and pause it, try these, and, see, and unpause it when you're ready. Okay, assuming you've unpaused here. Eight times eight is 64. One plus one zeros, two zeros, there we go. This one, 12 times seven is 84. Zero plus a zero are two zeros. This is a division, so we're subtracting one zero from that two zeros, so that's gonna be one zero here. 63 divided by nine is seven. All right, same thing here. We have four zeros minus two zeros, that'll be two zeros. 48 divided by four is 12. All right, last two. We're multiplying, so we have a total of, how many zeros? Five zeros, okay, so one, two, three, four, five. And then five times nine is 45, and that is a big number, okay. Last one, how many zeros are we gonna end up with? You tell me. Three, right? Five minus two, so that'd be three zeros. 64 divided by eight, here we go. Okay, that's it. All right, very quickly, let's look back at um, 
percentages and decimals and things like that, 0 0.7 actually means, if you had to explain this to a little kid, you would say something like, oh, well, that's, uh, you know, 7 tenths or something like that. And how to read this, you would say 0 0.7. That's going to be 7 tenths. 0 0.07, you'd say 7 one hundredths, right? 0 0.007 is 7 one thousandths, right? Okay, just make sure you understand that. We're going to do exactly the same thing, except for this time we're going to add decimals to the mix. And this is a lot easier than you thought. And you're going to, weeks from now, you're going to go, man, I can do this stuff in my head. This is crazy. And you'll be able to. It's really neat. So, all right. Same thing. Estimate an answer. Estimate an answer. That's the first step. So, obviously, pause it if you need to. And the reason you're going to do this, estimate an answer, is so you can kind of go, if you, when you're doing this thing in your head, you can go, oh, I, this is my answer. Then you can look back and go, wait a minute, that's not reasonable. That's way more than what my estimate was. So you're going to kind of guess an answer about and then go from there. Okay. Second step is to ignore the decimals. Ignore them and multiply or divide. Do just what you did a second ago. Third step is to add a decimal or a zero or zeros so your answer is reasonable. In other words, it's close to what you estimated a second ago. That's why you estimate really quickly in your head. You'll get faster with this. Work on being correct at first, then the speed will come. It's like playing a guitar. Okay, nobody does lightning fast, hammer on and off, you know, solos at first. You get the notes down correctly, then you get faster at it. Same thing here. Okay, let's try a couple of examples here. All right, first stop is estimate. This is about one times about one, which is about one, right? One times one is one. So what you're going to do is ignore the decimals and or zeros. So what you're going to look at, this actually in your head, you should be thinking 12 times 12 is what this is. Well, 12 times 12 is 144, all right? But our estimate was 1. So what is going to make this close to 1? Right there, the decimal right there, 1.44. That's how it works, okay? Same thing here. We can go 54 divided by 0 0.9. Well, your estimate would be 54 divided by what is that about? One, right? 54 divided by one is about 54. Keep that in your head, all right? Now you ignore the, the zero, ignore the decimals, all that stuff. What's 54 divided by nine? Six. Well, that's not close to 54. What you would do is you would add a zero to make that close to 54. That's how you do it. This one is the same thing. Seven times 0 0.8 is about the same thing as seven times one, right? Well, we all know seven times one is seven. So in your head, you think, okay, seven times one is seven. That's about what the answer is going to be. But we know to not look at the zero or decimal and just go, okay, seven times eight, that's 56. Now, what could you do to this number to make it close to seven reasonably? There we go, 5.6. This one, hope you're getting faster at these now. Estimate, that's about 700 divided by one. 700 divided by one is about 700, somewhere. All right, now you ignore the zero, ignore the decimal. What you actually have now is 72 divided by 12. Well, that's going to be 6. Well, we estimated our answer was 700. The answer is going to be 600. That's the closest it'll be to 700. Last two, 11 times 1.1. Well, I mean, 11 times 1 is 11, right? So ignore this and go 11 times 11. That's 121. What's going to make this close to 11? Right there. Last one, this is a little trickier than all the rest of them, but I just put it here on purpose. Uh, the estimate to 420 divided by 0 0.6 is, that's about one, so 400, 500, somewhere around there. That's our guess. The actual problem when we ignore zeros and decimals becomes 42 divided by six, right? Well, the answer to that's seven. Well, what is gonna give us an answer that's closest to four or 500? There it is, okay, and that's it. And that's the second trick of the week, all right? Pause it and try these six. Okay, well, let's, let's see. Estimate one times eight is eight. One, uh, the, the problem actually turns into 12 times eight, which is 96. Closest thing to eight, 9.6. This is about six divided by eight, which is about one, you know, about one. So ignoring this, 56 divided by eight is seven. About one will be 0.7. This is going to be 700 times 1-ish, so 700 is our estimate. But you say 7 times 9 is 63. What, what's closest to 700? That. This one is about 5 divided by 7, which is, you know, about 1, a little less than 1. 
So it's about one, all right? 49 divided by seven is seven. Well, that's not about one. So it'll be again, 0.7. Last two, 5,000 times 0 0.6 is about 5,000 times one, but a little less than that. So around 5,000. Ignore everything except for the five and the six. Five times six is 30. What gives you something close to 5,000-ish? 3,000. And this one, 81,000 divided by one is about 81,000, right? So it's somewhere around 81,000. If you ignore this, ignore this, ignore this, the problem is 81 divided by nine, which is nine. Well, if it's close to 81,000, it's gonna to have to be 90,000. I'll give you another tricky way of, neat way of doing these a lot easier, okay? All right, try this, pause it. Okay, here we go. The, this, is the, this is the first problem we did, right? Three times nine is 27, two zeros. Second one, five times 12 is 60. That's a little tricky there because there's an extra zero. Then add the two zeros, boom. Next, this one, you're subtracting, right? Because it's division. So two minus one is one zero. 81 divided by nine, yoink, there we go. Subtracting again here, just one zero, three minus two zeros. 54 divided by six is also nine, all right? We're adding two plus three, that's five zeros. Seven times four is 28. And look, there's my annual salary again. Oh, plus tips. There we go. All right, division means we subtract five minus three is two. 42 divided by six is seven. There we go. All right, we'll try one more. Give this a shot. This is one of the second types, so pause it. Okay, we're looking at one times five is five. Then we go 12 times five is 60, but you go 12 times, that's not close to five. It should be just six. 4.9 divided by seven. I think we had that before. That's gonna be about one. You say 49 divided by seven is seven, but make it 0.7 because that's closest to one. This is really 800 times, that's a small, that's not even quite one. So it's less than 800. So. This is gonna be eight times three, right? Which is 24, but 0.3 is more like 30%. The answer is actually 240. And we'll talk more about that later on, a tricky way to do that. This is about six divided by nine, which is about one, less than one. 63 divided by nine is seven, and that's about one with the decimal. This one here, 0 0.2, that's not even close to being one, so it's not a very big number, but we're looking at eight times two, which is 16, and that is actually 1,600. And again, we'll talk about a, a neat way to do that later on. This is about 50,000 divided by about one, which is about 50,000. Ignoring decimals and zeros, 54 divided by, or excuse me, divided by six is nine. And the, oops, the actual answer here is 90,000. That's a tricky, trickiest one we have here, but we'll, we'll do more of those as the year goes on. Okay, a couple of very quick pages of word problems, just a few each. Pause it and try the first one. Or actually, try all three of them. Okay, first one. There were 70 families at the homeschool conference, each with 30 children. How many children were at the homeschool conference? Seven times three, two zeros. That's a couple of those big old buses you see at the homeschool conference. All right, Joe used $640 to pay eight employees equally. How much did each employee earn? Well, one zero minus no zeros is one zero. 64 divided by eight is 80, 80 bucks each. All right, Bethany Grace, great homeschool name there. Studied chemistry for 40 hours straight. How many minutes straight did she study? There's 60 minutes in an hour, so this is your actual problem. 60 times 40. Six times four is 24, and two zeros, there we go. One more page, all right? Pause this one, try all three of those and see what you get. Okay, you're back. Okay, seven students, they all took 0.8 hours to finish a job. How many total hours did they work? We're gonna estimate, right? That's the first thing we were messing with, decimals and zeros. So seven times about one is about seven, right? Now no zero is their decimal. Seven times eight is 56. That's not close to seven. That's close to seven, there we go. There were 4.8 pounds of butter to be shared equally among the cooks. There were eight cooks. How much should each cook get? In other words, this is 4.8 divided by eight, right? Now five divided by eight is like half, you know, maybe somewhere around there. 
So that's our estimate. All right. Now we ignore this and go 48 divided by 8 is 6. But that's not half. What's half? Close, close to half? 0.6, right? There we go. Okay. Each shoe weighed 0 0.9 pounds. If there were 800 phones, what was the total weight? That's a trick question. Phones have nothing to do with shoes at all. We'll just pretend they're shoes then, right? Okay. 800 times 0.9. That is your problem here. I can put a little zero there to make it easier. Do you see that right now you're already kind of starting to go, oh, I'm kind of getting this. I'm doing decimal stuff in my head here. All right? The more you can do it in your head, the better. But let's look at this. 800 times 0 0.9 is about 800 times 1 or 800, right? The actual problem when we ignore all this jazz is just going to be 8 times 9, which is 72. Well, what's close to 800? 720. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to skip those two final problem sets. But go ahead. This Look down at the, at the link and go to that page and uh, download that whole the assignment sheet, that whole document, the PDF, and go ahead and do week one. Now spread it out over four days. Don't cram it all into one day. That doesn't help that way. You do things a little each day for day after day after day. Then when you're finished with all four days, or you can even do it one day at a time, just check your answers for that day and see how many you got right. Try to you know, cover up the other answers so you don't ruin it for the, for the rest of the days of the week. So Okay, have a great week. I'll see you next week.